Hey, so I just uh, got questions about the uh, extrude path again, and actually just thought of something that might uh, actually work. Um, I'm gonna try it out real quick. So the, the problem that we have is uh, if you extrude along a curve, and again, um, I always put my profile curve at the base of the curve I'm gonna extrude. I wanna make sure that it is aligned to the curve. One way to do that is actually to do a uh, motion path. And in this case, you know, I put a motion path on there so it'll match. But what I can do now is, you know, take this thing and put it wherever, and I know that that curve is always going to match right up against there. Um, and once I've got that, I'll go in here and just delete that motion path so I'm back to normal. Um, I am going to go ahead and freeze transformations and all these things and also delete their history if there is any. Cool. So now when I extrude that, by default I get something that looks like kind of what I want. I mean, it's still upright, which is a little bit weird. Do you think maybe it would curve and bend a little bit? Um, if we look at our options for the... Um, <laughs> for the extrude, it doesn't really give us a whole lot, you know. No. All that. Distance, of course not. Flat, of course not. Tube. It's the closest thing we get. It's a little bit, you know, it doesn't have an up vector. It doesn't know where to look. Uh, we can still rotate it around there, which, you know, sort of get us where we want to go. And we can still use the scale. Uh, but it's just not giving us the results that we want. This, but what it does give us, which is really cool, um, is the uh, ability to grow along it, which is a very cool thing, right? And if I take, what did I screw? I must have screwed something up. I changed my options, so let me go back to zero again. There we go, cool. So let's make sure that this works. Yeah, there we go, that's what I want. But what you'll see is when I cross that up vector, so right now I'm going in the X direction, right? And when I start going in the Y direction, flips across that uh, you know world space Y basically and flips on us now if you want to be really uh, careful what you can do is when you hit this point is actually flip your object right but that's a lot of counter animating to get what you want um, and you want to make sure that your animation is exactly how you want it before you go and animate that because you'll be just tearing your hair out going back and forth back and forth back and forth right um, but it's it's kind of a bummer because this is really, really cool the way that this works. Other than that, uh, that you know, flipping, which really kind of makes it unusable. So what I was thinking was, I'm going to delete that. Um, another way to, to deal with this, um, and I was kind of bummed because I thought this would work, is if I loft between here, I can actually, um, Oops, I need an isoparm on that uh, loft. So let me go back to my loft and make section that spans two. All right, cool. And I'm gonna, oops, shift select the isoparm of that surface and apply. And let's see what we get here. And actually, I'm kind of curious if I grab like this half and drag it. Yeah, I can get a little bit of control over what is kind of like a normal, you know? Um, that surface is, is bending sideways, so it's bending sideways. Um, now I was like, oh, this is awesome, this will be great, but it only gives me one subcurve, which is the U subcurve, which is kind of weird. Um, I don't know why it doesn't give me the second subcurve. Um, you know, I do have my uh, isoform value, so it's actually kind of interesting, but that's coming from the curve and surface. That's a different history. That's not the history that I want. I want the extrude subcurve. For some reason, when I do it on isoform, I don't get it. So I was stumped again. But then I was like, you know what? One more thing we can try. Get back my original curve there. Is to just deform it after the fact. So let's try that. So what I'm going to do is um, here's my original curve, and to get its distance, I'm going to use arc len dash ch1 which is going to create a curve info node i'm going to hit uh the extra editor so i can see what it gives us back and it gives us back a length of 48.22 the reason i want that is because i want a curve that matches this uh length so what i'm going to do is duplicate my curve and i'm going to select the very end of it hit l actually i'm going to hold l and pull, pull it out right and what that actually does actually i can toggle it so it's always on and that actually locks the length of my curve so I can't 
pull it out any longer. It's like it's not really dynamics. I don't know to tell you what it really is. Um, but I just want to make sure to get this guy straight. So, alternatively to this, I would have just built a straight curve. All right, cool. So let's say that that's straight and that's what we want. Close enough, I'll do an arc line on that. And 54, that doesn't seem right. It should be the same length. Well, I'm not gonna worry about it that much, to be honest. All right, I got a straight, straight curve here. I'm gonna do my uh, extrude along it, right? And with that, I have my normal uh, subcurve operations that I can do, and I'm not gonna get any flipping, right? And then what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be the, let's see here. I might need another curve, I think for a second. Yeah, I'm going to duplicate that curve and then use that curve as a wire deformer. So I'm going to go to deform, uh, wire deformer, select the surface, hit enter, select the curve, hit enter, cool. Now when I move this curve, uh, what have I done? All right, let's redo that. Reformer. Select shape. Enter. Curve. Enter. There we go. Wire deformer. Cool. So now I should be able to take this curve and it'll affect my extruded surface. Now right now it's not affecting enough of it so I'm just going to need to up my drop up distance. And then what I'm going to do is uh, take this curve to that curve and create a blend shape because they're the same and turn it on. All right, so now they're matching each other. And now I'm going to really hope that this works. So our drive still works, looks like it. And the follow still works. Hey, man, I've been using Maya a long time and I've never thought of this until basically today. So let's animate it. Let's key those guys in it. Looks like three. And then we'll go to like say 75. Or let's say 25. Key that. Go around 75. I'm gonna move them both together until they get to the end. Key that. And then Drive this all the way to one and key that. Cool. So now I'm actually getting that subcurve growth that we like without. It's a little bit funky, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. I mean, you can use other deformers on there, of course. You can use like a, you know, a spline deformer or um, sorry, not a spline deformer, uh, like you know, an IK chain or something like that, and get all sorts of other things. But basically, all I'm doing is just building up my deformers in uh, history here. So if I select this object, what you can see is I have two subcurves that go into extrude, and then the extrude gets controlled by the wire. So subcurve first, wire second, and result looks like what we want. All right, hope that helps.